Hey everybody, I'm Michael Koval Anderson, urban designer, author, and host of the documentary series about urbanism, The Life Size City. Welcome to the YouTube channel for the series. I'm just going to get stuck right into it today. I read a study recently that I found to be absolutely fascinating. It states that each of us humans only have a limited number of places that we visit, that we frequent in our daily lives. A group of researchers tracked and followed 40,000 people uh, over a period of a few years using four different data sets and they determined that each of us has a maximum of 25 places in our lives. 25. <clears throat> now you might have heard that humans have a fixed number of people in their lives. The so-called Dunbar number named for Robin Dunbar, anthropologist in the 1990s. And that number is 150. But working in urbanism, I am fascinated by this revelation that we have a maximum of 25 places in our lives. The study is called Evidence for a Conserved Quantity in Human Mobility. Ooh, classic academic title there, right? Super sexy. But they hope to use the findings to improve state-of-the-art modeling of human mobility. Now, I'll admit I haven't read the entire study. I read the abstract and some articles about it. I'll link to them down in the description so you can have a look at them as well. But man, it was enough. You probably know what I had to do, right? As soon as I read this article. Yeah, I had to map out all the places in my daily life. <laughs> no surprise there. Now, this exercise complements so very nicely the last clip that I posted here on the YouTube channel where I looked at my neighborhood as a 15 or 20 minute neighborhood and mapped out all the different places in a close proximity to my home that I frequent all the time. These are the places in my daily life. It really took me a long time to compile this list. I had to think long and hard about it because many of the places that we go to uh, frequently in our lives are habitual. We don't think about it. It's not an event to go down to the local kiosk or into a supermarket. So it took a while, but I think I finally nailed it. Now the red circle in the middle there is my home. And I work by and large at the moment from home. So that eliminates a second place, a workplace that I go to every single day. So if we start with supermarkets, these are the three supermarkets in my neighborhood that I visit in the course of a week. Kind of rotate between supermarkets for various reasons. And this one is family. My ex-wife lives about 200 meters down the road from here and I visit often and my kids spend a week at a time at each place, which is typically Danish. I have two takeaway places on my street that I love and that I frequent perhaps too frequently, but let's just leave that one alone for now. Here are the places that I go to for recreation. I don't know exactly how the researchers categorize places, but I included my back courtyard. It's a place where I sit and I read, you know, in the sunshine. Sometimes I eat dinner there. All the recycling bins and everything are in the back courtyard. So it felt for me like a different place than my actual home. And then there's a park where I frequently play petanque with my friends. And there's indoor tennis, my swimming spot on the harbor, and sitting in the sun on Queen Louise's Bridge. Often having a meeting or meeting with a friend and having some wine. Transport-wise, I included my local bike shop and the metro station up the street, which I only really use to get to the airport, which is also marked on the map. I normally travel like half my life, so in a normal year, the airport is a very frequent place. And here are three places that feature in my daily life. There is an urban shopping mall in my neighborhood, which, for better or for worse, is rather unavoidable. Then there's the doctor's office and the pharmacy. There are two local kiosks in my neighborhood that I use all the time for various small purchases or picking up packages for stuff that I bought online. And then there are the cafes and the restaurants. I have regular places that I visit often. Creature of habit which is probably the whole point of this study that I'm talking about today. I have meetings at a few different cafes. I kind of rotate through them. I have my favorite wine bar, of course. And the one off to the right is more of a summer affair. It's another wine bar where you can swim in the harbor. And at the bottom right is the airport lounge, where I usually eat and read newspapers before a flight. And then when I was done with this, I decided to take it one step further. I started to measure out the distance to all of these places from my home. 15 of them are under 10 minutes on foot from my apartment. Six of them are between a 10 or 15 minute bike ride from here. And four of them are between 30 and 40 minutes either by bike or by metro. That gave me a total of 26 places. Blew my mind. Super close to the 25 that the researchers have determined is the maximum. But then I started to think about the map. 
And the bike shop, for example, I'm not there all the time. I'm only there a few times a year, so I don't think it fits into the methodology of this study. Same thing goes for the doctor's office and the pharmacy. I'm not there very often at all. My kids either, luckily, right? So I took those off the list and I ended up with 23, under that maximum of 25 that the researchers have determined. Super cool. And then I was thinking, it's interesting to consider, right? How some of these places are gonna get dropped in the winter. I don't play petanque in a park with my friends in the winter months. Uh, I don't sit on a bench on Queen Louise's bridge very often at all throughout the winter. Maybe if it's a beautiful sunny day in January and you're all bundled up and you're enjoying that little blast of light. I don't use my backyard much at all during the winter, not as, certainly not as much as I do in the rest of the year. I will continue to go to the harbor and jump in. Like many Danes, I like to winter bathe. So jumping in the harbor all year round, that ain't going nowhere. Then I made a map looking at my potential winter places and it drops to 19. And then there is, oh, COVID-19 year, right? 2020. During the lockdown back in the spring here in Copenhagen, that number of places that I used dropped, plummeted to 12. Only supermarkets and pharmacies, essential services and takeaway places were open. We could go out, we could go for walks and explore the urban landscape, absolutely. But still, during the lockdown, I figured out only 12 places. Like, cut in half from my normal total. There are some other interesting findings in this study. They figured out that people who have more places, sort of closer to that maximum of 25, they generally have more acquaintances. And super interesting, when we get a new place, right? We drop one of the other places. Our needs may change in our lives, but we're always gonna stick to that one constant number. And then there is the time frame. There are always about 10 places that we frequent for under 30 minutes every week. Now these are maybe the supermarkets or the kiosks, places like that. There are four places where we spend between 30 and 60 minutes a week and so on. We rarely spend more than 48 hours a week in one of these places. Maybe with uh, a lot of people working from home during COVID-19 here in 2020, that will drastically change. But generally, these numbers stay the same. And remember, Having a lower number is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that 25 is the maximum. We simply can't have more places in our lives than that. So yeah, the question is now, Michael, what does it all mean? I have absolutely no idea. I got nothing for you. I am just thinking like crazy about this study. And that is a really cool thing. I don't know, maybe we can map the movements of all the people in one neighborhood or one small town somewhere and use the findings to determine how we can better plan transport to and from these primary destinations. Maybe we can use the findings to figure out how to make or design better public space for the citizens in neighborhoods and cities. I think there's a lot of potential in it. If you have any ideas from watching this, uh, let me know in the comments, you know, how we could use stuff like this to make our cities better. Until then, thanks for watching this strange little urbanism stream of consciousness from me today. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. We got lots of cool things going on. As for me, it's Sunday here in Copenhagen. I'm going to try and figure out which places on my list I'm going to visit today. That's it for me. I'm out. Thanks for watching and see you next time.